Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, I wanted to dedicate an episode to energy cords. I get a lot of people that talk to me about energy problems, emotional problems, connections with other people, and in many cases, they have an energy strand or energy cord connected with another person or thing that is draining their energy or influencing them on some level. I wanted to discuss this so that we could talk about it and you could become aware of it and it could inevitably change your life. It is a very powerful thing. I discussed this briefly in my book, The Idea of Energy Cords, and I wanted to discuss it further here. We understand it is in the nature of human beings to get attached to other people and things. Perhaps this begins when we're born attached to our mother by our umbilical cord. It's what we are imprinted on when we're born, the cord that attaches us to our mother. Our attachments are how we know we are connected to the world around us. The subconscious awareness of these lines of connection is evidenced by our expressions, such as feelings tied down or saying that no strings attached or I need to cut the ties. On a deep level, we can sense the strands of energy that attach us to the world around us. Even if we can't see them, they are real. We know that there is the silver cord that people talk about when you awaken in the astral realm. We also know about string theory, essentially how everything is connected through strings. So this makes sense. Energy strands are invisible. Yet very genuine lines of energy and communication that connect us to people, places, and things. Energy can ebb and flow through these links, these strands, cords, filaments, and threads, and strings that connect us to the world around us can be thin and transient, or they can flow like a vast river, and they can even come from our past and exist over lifetimes. Strong emotions such as love and fear travel quickly through these linkages, Physical pain, physical pleasure, and knowledge and wisdom can be transmitted through them. Some of these energy attachments are beneficial. They allow us to feel vibrant and alive. Others aren't so helpful. They deplete and weaken us. When two people interact with each other, energy cords are formed between them. These energy cords can feel either energizing or depleting. Sometimes you can lose energy through a cord. It also can be a way for person to gain information from you or even in a dark way manipulate and control you most individuals are not consciously aware of these energy cords but they can feel them on a subconscious level some clairvoyants and psychics can see these strands of energy which usually run from the solar plexus to the solar plexus but they can attach anywhere on the body the stronger the emotional connection between the two people the stronger the cord is I have seen connections from different chakras for a third eye to third eye connection, for instance. Energy cords allow us to feel another person, even if they are thousands of miles away. Sometimes we can even sense what another person is feeling or thinking through the cord or strand. Energy strands can pull people together and they can also make it difficult to separate when a relationship is no longer constructive. They are cord-like connections to locations as well. Haven't you ever seen somebody that seemingly should be done with the relationship, but they're so connected? Oftentimes, it's my belief that there is still a cord between the two that has not been cut. In Western cultures, most people know very little about the strands of energy that connect them to other people and places. They see the world as containing separate and unrelated things. They don't view themselves as a part of all things. Rather, they view themselves as something separate and greater than it all. They don't realize that from and to every action, every person and every object flows a filament or strand or string that connects to the rest of the world. Those in earth-based cultures of the past, however, understood the intimate and extraordinary realm of energy. They knew how to sense the strands that improved life and how to diminish and release the strands that did not. In many native cultures, it's believed that humans have filaments of energy rooting us to the land as well as to each other. 
It's believed that if we travel too far, our cord to the earth will be stretched too thin, and we can become weakened and even ill. The idea of being profoundly connected and corded to the earth is a belief of indigenous peoples spanning the globe. In this book, you'll learn what ancient healers have always known, that we live in a universe of energy, and at every point, this energy is influencing and affecting you. You'll learn traditional methods to reclaim your personal energy, cut the strands to toxic relationships and events from your past and keep your energy field clear. Additionally, you'll discover the connections between energy strands and the collective unconscious, your chakras, guides, angels, the cosmos, and the creator. Denise Lynn calls the cords of energy that connect us to the universe energy strands, and I recommend her book Energy Strands, or also Affinity Strands, she calls them, because the energy of people, places, and objects cannot attach to you unless there is an affinity, or in other words, unless there is a frequency match. Here is a definition of affinity, a natural attraction to a person, thing, idea, an inherent likeness or agreement. Also, it signifies a close resemblance or connection. In the realm of chemistry, affinity is the force by which atoms are held together. The way that you can use the term in, is to include positive affinity, which means it can increase your energy, or negative affinity, which will deplete it. These strands can be infinitesimally thin, like microfilaments or spider webs. Or they can be big and strong like thick ropes of energy. They can be flexible, flowing and soft, and they can be rigid and seemingly unmovable. They can be clear, iridescent and shimmering with light, or they can be dull, sticky, dense and murky. Energy strands are not just the etheric and astral cords of connection between people, events, place and objects. They also serve a pathway for subconsciously sending and receiving energy and information to and from the people, places, events, and objects around us. Here's how it works between people. When you form a relationship with someone, either in a negative or positive way, malleable energy filaments link you to the other person and them to you, and consequently information, emotions, and an energy frequencies transfer between the two of you. Highly intuitive people and shamans from native cultures are often able to see these strands. I think that I've seen them before. I'd love to know in the comments if you can see these strands. For some people, it's a very powerful skill. Sometimes the strands emanate from the solar plexus, as we mentioned before. Other times they radiate out from other places in the body, such as the third eye, the top of the head, the heart chakra, and even the root chakra near the base of the spine. The strands can vary in color, texture, and size. Strands formed when two people are in love can be large, radiant, and crystal clear, going from heart to heart chakra. The color can vary from blue to green and even pink and golden, but the colors are always vivid. However, when someone is resentful of another person, the strands between these individuals can be murky, dingy, gray, and the cords can be stringy and fibrous. You can be energized or depleted by what streams between you and another person. In much the way that the ocean ebbs and flows, sometimes you are giving energy and sometimes you are receiving it through your cords. And sometimes you and another person are giving and receiving the same time. If you're exhausted and drained after chatting with someone, but they seem vibrant and energized afterward, this could be the result of an energy strand drain. In other words, energy went from you to that person, but there wasn't any ebbing from them back to you. It was a one-way journey, hence you're depleted after you talk. Some people are referred to as energy vampires, and this may be what's happening in the way in which they take your energy. Energy strands of attachment exist between you and almost everyone with whom you have ever been in a relationship. Sometimes. These strands are so thin that they are barely a whisper and sometimes they are like a freeway. Information, energy, loving feelings, and toxic thoughts can flow back and forth through the strands. For example, you might have the same thought or emotion at the same time as someone that you are cord connected to, or you might go to the same location at the same time or purchase the same object or intuitively know what they are doing or feeling. When the cord is strong, even if that individual is half a planet away, you still may be aware of their emotions, their physical pain, or their thoughts because of the strands that unite you. 
Sometimes energy strands can grow and become more solidified, even if you are not in physical contact with the person. You may feel their emotions as your emotions, and even feel their thoughts as your thoughts, especially if they are a strong sender or you are an open receiver. I find that with my wife. I know when she's not feeling well. I can tell when she's happy. It's all an interchange between us using these energy cords. Have you ever run into someone you knew when you were both a long distance from where you lived? Of course, this meeting could be a coincidence, but it could also be because of the tug of the cords that draw you together. When you're in close physical proximity, the energy currents between you strengthen and even act like magnets pulling you together. It's almost like a fisherman reeling in a fish. You are drawn together. The more emotions involved in the relationship, the stronger the attraction. Negative emotions often create a stronger pull than the positive ones. The longer you've known someone and the closer you are to them, the thicker and stronger the strands are. If you haven't been in touch with someone for years, the strands between you both may lie limp and flaccid, yet when you're in close proximity, the strands can pump up and strengthen and even pull you together. For the people out there that are interested in finding a specific person, I've always found that if you can identify the energetic cord connection between you two, that is one of the secrets to either ending or starting a relationship. Most people are completely unaware of the effect energy strands have on their life and well-being. To gain a deep understanding of the strands that connect us to the universe around us, it's valuable to discover some things about the nature of energy in general. There are three tenets that apply to energy cords as well as to absolutely everything. These three tenets underlie everything that you will be exploring regarding the energy that flows out of you and into you. First of all, everything is composed of constantly changing energy. Secondly, we are not separate from the world around us. And third, everything has consciousness. So, to begin with, everything is composed of constantly changing energy. Those living in ancient earth-based cultures understood that all forms of life from the clouds to the trees to the buffalo that roamed the Great Plains to mountains and stones were all transient, swirling patterns of energy. This is an understanding that goes back to the primordial times in native clans spanning the world. Our present-day concept that the universe is fixed and stayed is dramatically at odds with this fundamental ancestral insight. We are immersed in an ocean of energy that flows and moves in constant, ever-changing undulations through time and space. All life is energy. Physicists acknowledge that atoms and molecules, even in objects that seem solid, are in constant motion. Beneath the surface of fixed objects, existing in a linear river of time, is a realm of energy that swirls, dissolves, and coalesces once again. There's an innate harmony and cosmic order apparent in all life. As waves of energy and pulsating electrons spiral into and out of existence, the world around us and within us is an interplay of these patterns of energy in an ever-flowing relationship. It is a dance of two opposing yet harmonious forces in the universe, the yin and the yang, mystery and form, an infinite yet patterned timeless drama of dark and light. Remember that secondly, we are not separate from the world around us. As we grow in technology, we have forgotten the primordial wisdom that all creatures and all things on our planet are connected. We've forgotten that we are connected within a living universe that sings with life and pulses with intensity of spirit. We've forgotten that everyone and everything has a conscious spirit and that we are all manifestations of pure energy forever fluctuating. It's essential to make the journey back to a connected view of reality that is innately natural to you as your connection to your mother when you were in the womb. To remember that there's nothing out there that isn't you. Because of the linear way in which we perceive reality, we can't fully understand this on an intellectual level. Inside each of us is a longing, a yearning, and a remembering of that exquisite place of oneness and unity beyond time and space. We can't communicate about it verbally or even write about it in a comprehensive way. However, deep inside of each of us, we all know this. Many of the difficulties people experience in the modern world stem from an erroneous belief, the idea that we are separate beings, that we are not intimately connected to our planet 
and to her animals and trees. In Western culture, we believe that we are separate from each other, and sometimes we are even divorced from ourselves. The Western belief that we can exist independently of our environment is an illusion with potentially grave circumstances for health and happiness. So many people are walking around thinking that they are separate. They don't have any awareness of these connections and cords of energy. It is essential now that we not only expand our awareness of self to our personal environments, but broaden our sense of self beyond the boundaries of time and space to encompass not just our home, but also our community and our planet. Everything is conscious. Everything. Those in native cultures understand that few in Western cultures know that they recognize that not only is the universe around us a vast flowing energy field with which we are intimately connected, but everything in the universe is conscious. Even the most hardened skeptics would agree that animals are conscious beings, and modern science has proven that plants have intent and respond to the energy fields of humans. However, no less conscious are the stones and mountains and rivers. Ancient native people understood this well. They would ask for blessings from the spirit of the sea before embarking on a fishing trip. I'm saying that each time that you interact with any object, there is an energetic cord or strand that connects in those moments and they may be affecting you. Now, I would refer you to a previous episode, You Are a Field. And in that episode, we began to discuss that you are composed of endlessly transforming energy fields and that you are not separate from the world around you and the world around you is alive and has consciousness. You are a field. When you comprehend that there isn't anything out there that isn't you, it is so much easier to understand and release strands that you don't desire. I do want to mention that although strands can sometimes be seen as lines of energy, there is a deeper way to perceive them. The reason we perceive them as strands or cords is that it allows us to give a definition to something that is essentially indefinable. This is similar to the way that chakras are usually portrayed as colored balls of energy, even though they are more nebulous and not so defined. The colors of the aura and chakras are fluid and constantly shifting and changing, but it makes it easier to perceive them when we think of colored balls of energy. This can also be compared to the way that God is given a physical form in many cultures, because this makes it easier to relate to him or her. It can be difficult to relate to something that is elusive and that is everywhere. So do not be discouraged if you don't see the strands and cords that connect you to everything in the universe. The visualization of them is kind of a metaphor to help you understand how and why they work. And when you imagine them as cords, that also makes it easier for the cords to be cut and the strand to be released. And those methods that we have, which I'll discuss in a little bit, will work better. What are you attached to? There are great flotillas of energy strands surging out from each of us into the universe around us. One of the most interesting concepts of the universe is Carlos Castaneda's, where he talks about the assemblage point and really all of the different realities and things we're attached to sort of come to a single point. You have strands to your parents and siblings, children, miscarried babies, childhood friends, sexual partners, difficult or wonderful bosses, co-workers, plus even sometimes spiritual leaders, therapists, healers. You may create ribbons or filaments of attachment to public figures, celebrities, politicians, acquaintances, and neighbors. There are strands between you and your home and all of its objects, your animal allies, current pets, pets of the past, past lives, ancestors, locales around the world where you have lived, houses you've lived in, where you were born, the stars and the moon, your guides, angels, the creator, even ideas and concepts. You do not live in isolation. You are being influenced and influencing the world around you in every moment. As a baby in the womb, you were attached via your umbilical cord to your mother. There was a physical joining, but there was also an energetic connection that lasted far past the time when the umbilical cord was cut. This is why a mother can know her baby is in distress, even if she is down the road. The cords are usually strong, and it does not matter how far away the mother is from the child. Because in those early years, the cord stretches and distance is irrelevant. Emotional energy surges back and forth between child and parent. 
Gradually over the years, the cords diminish and can even dissolve as the child becomes more independent and self-sustaining. Sometimes, however, neither the mother nor the child relinquishes the bond and the relationships can either stay supportive, loving, and close or the patient or the child can suffer if less than positive emotions when you are with your mother so you decide to move to another part of the country to gain your independence but somehow you still feel depleted, especially after contact with your mother. You can have spent 40 years apart living in different locations and yet a family member can still drain you. This occurs because the strands have grown thick and sticky, yet they stretch between you both no matter where you are. Those same mother strands can also be love-filled and the energy flowing through them can gently continue to support you through the ups and downs of life. The same can be true of strands between any family members, however, because of the umbilical connection, the initial strands are often stronger between mother and child. Strong strands of attachment can be found connecting with your parents, even if you didn't know them and even if they've passed over. Children who were adopted, even if they know nothing about their birth parents, can still have a cord connection with their biological parents as well as with their adoptive parents. Curiously, things such as food preferences and even religious tendencies can be transmitted through these strings of energy. Some people say, oh, it's genetic, that person's genetic, he's a lot like their father or mother. And it could be, it's not genetic, it's just the relaying of information through these strings of energy. The threads between twins are especially strong. Often, though separated by miles, they know what the other is feeling and even thinking. Depending on family dynamics, these kinds of cords can be empowering or diminishing. When the family cords are clear and vibrant, the connecting strands of family members can instill an emotional and energetic support that is sustaining and healing. The reverse is true when the cords are stagnant, dull, and heavy. In other words, your family is with you no matter where you go. Trauma can pass through familial energy cords and recent scientific research affirms the transmission of trauma through generations. In 2016, the scientific journal Biological Psychiatry published an article entitled Holocaust Exposure, Induced Intergenerational Effects on FKBP5 Methylation, which found that trauma can pass through the genes. Dr. Rachel Yehuda, director of Mount Sinai's Traumatic Stress Studies Division, led a study in which her team interviewed and drew blood from 32 sets of survivors of trauma and their children, focusing on a gene called FKBP5. The researchers noticed what is called an epigenetic change, not a change in the gene itself, but rather a change in a chemical marker attached to it. For example, in the first generation, the actual survivors of trauma, such as Holocaust, the September 11 disaster, or Hurricane Katrina, there's a genetic adaptation or response to that horrendous event. However, in the second generation, which experienced no similar trauma, there's the exact same genetic change. Dr. Yehuda related that when they looked at the survivor's own children, they also had an epigenetic change in the same spot on a stress-related gene. From a spiritual perspective, the trauma that travels through the genes also flows through the family energy cord to subsequent generations. There can be strong strands to family members who have passed on. Sometimes these are sustaining and supportive, but sometimes they're depleting. If you felt supported and loved by someone while they were alive, chances are that if there is still an attachment after they die, it will continue to be sustaining. If the family member was depleting or needy while alive, there's a good chance that there will remain strands that are diminishing you. Even if your family isn't your blood family, connecting cords can be strong. Moving beyond that, there can be ancestor strands. In addition to having strands that connect you to immediate family, you have strands and filaments that travel generations back through the bloodline. In some areas, this is called ancestor syndrome. Of course, some similarities with your ancestors, such as eye color and height, can be ascribed simply to genes, but research has found things such as career preferences seem to travel through the generations, even when a child is adopted at birth and knows nothing of their ancestry. What's occurring is that we are each part of a lineage that stretches behind us and unfurls before us. It is an unwavering rope of frequency, light, and energy through which emotions, experiences, 
and thoughts travel to and through you. In many ways, we are each like a young shoot on a very old root. You are connected to your ancestors through these ancestral cords. These strands can be great for you if all your ancestors were noble, gracious, high-minded beings. However, if some of your ancestors were less than honorable or experienced massive extended fear, trauma, anger, lack of confidence, or sadness, then these emotions can travel through the ancestral cords and burrow into you. In other words, the fear or depression you feel might not be yours personally. It might be an ancestral leakage through the family cord into you. Somebody says, hey, why are you depressed? Oh, it's my great, 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 great grandfather. (laughs) Sometimes the emotions and feelings that travel through the energy strings from your ancestors can feel like your own because they are so deeply embedded within you. Events in your ancestry that can wobble you are wars, oppression, slavery, famine and plagues, devastating diseases, crimes and injustice. Even if you don't know your ancestry, it can still be affecting you because of the cords that connect you to those people and through them to those events. However, the great thing is that these ancestral cords can be released. This way you are not carting around baggage from your ancestry and also you won't send it forward to future generations. It's not uncommon for strands to occur between you and your friends or even between you and your acquaintances. And if the strands are thick and strong, it's not uncommon to feel your friends' emotions as they feel them. It's a bit like in the movie E.T. where Elliot feels everything that E.T. is feeling just as it's occurring. You may even have energy cords traveling between you and casual acquaintances. I find it surprising at times how large and strong these cords can be. Another way that an attachment can occur is if strong emotions are directed toward you. It can be negative emotions which can feel like a psychic attack or they can be positive. If someone sends you overwhelming love. Psychic attacks are real. They can throw you off balance. However, most so-called psychic attacks are not intentional. An individual may become cranky with you and then think about you with an intensity of emotion without realizing that they're unsettling your energy field. Before you say, aha, I know just the person I'd like to project some fiery emotions to. Remember, if you use energy in this way to use your cords to send emotions with the intent to damage someone, It will almost always boomerang back to you and it will create an imbalance in your life. Even if you think it might be worth it, it's not. Don't feel guilty for anything that might have occurred in the past. If you've been angry with someone, chances are you didn't create an imbalance for them. It's not just the intense emotion that is debilitating to another person. It's emotion combined with a laser-focused intent that can act in this manner. Most people have a kind of full-spectrum anger, which means it just radiates out in all directions when they're upset, catching everyone in its field. But it's not a strong field because it's diluted. It's only when the person has the ability to sharply focus their emotion and their intention on one individual that a cord can throw someone off base. At the other end of the scale, if you love someone and feel intensity of that love while holding a clear vision of them, this can be healing and energizing. Sometimes, when I feel a wave of relaxation and joy through me, I can follow the cord to the sender. And I might call them or contact them. And they get the instant boomerang effect. They get the joy and relaxation right back at them. The energy flowing on these kinds of cords is healing and beneficial. Sometimes, there are a number of less than positive people corded to you you may feel that your chakra centers are blocked or jammed as a result you may feel constantly drained or overwhelmed especially if some of the people are needy individuals so you should be wary of those cords that come from people who consider you an enemy people you don't get along with or people that do not wish you well often the cords are much thicker and stronger between you and those you strongly dislike than between you and those you love Whatever you focus on with intensity strengthens its attachment to you. If you have strong emotions regarding those whom you dislike, that can often trump your love strand because they're more intense. I've met many people who never use the word hate and they say they never think in terms of having enemies because it isn't spiritual. I've known many 
who say they've never hated anyone or anything in their lives and are appalled by the concept. However, if I was able to look at the cords flowing out of them, some have cords that look exactly the same as those of others who admit to hating or having enemies. Be honest with yourself. You can say that, but these cords still might exist from the past. What you resist persists. If someone resists or denies the truth of their soul, whatever is suppressed becomes stronger. And the corresponding sticky energy that flows through their cords clogs their circuitry. Incidentally, it doesn't mean you're a bad person or not a spiritually advanced person. If you feel strong so-called negative emotions, it means you're human. Where the challenge exists is when you judge those emotions and try to suppress them. Then they become damaging to you. There are obviously very unique cords of energy that surge between lovers. The intensity of love and the passion of sexual encounters creates powerful bonds. These threads can be beautiful, strong, and clear, but they can also be muted, stringy, and dull, especially if there are any issues around sexuality or the relationship. Additionally, if one partner is needy or untrustworthy, then it's not uncommon for the other partner to feel constantly drained because of the strong strands that surge between them. Even after they are no longer in the relationship, these strands are that strong. Even the most casual sexual encounter creates durable cords that, if not cleared, can last years or decades or lifetimes. And if someone has numerous lovers in sexual encounters and they haven't cleared these attachments, the numerous strands can get tangled and intertwined and can even get in the way of meaningful relationships in the future. Do you have an old lover whom you haven't seen for a while but you never truly disconnected from? The strand between you both may have been coiled and dried, yet it can become taut and strengthened when you are in contact, or even if that ex-partner thinks of you. Remember the example of the plant that hasn't been watered and lies limp, but then with water it suddenly becomes upright and alert. This is similar to what can occur with old lovers. It's important to examine sexual energy strands from your past and clear them. Otherwise, the cords may stay for a long time, which can interfere with your current and future relationships. The more intimate we are with another human being, the stronger and more pervasive the cords of energy are, and the longer they linger within us. Additionally, even if you are in a loving relationship and plan on being so for a long time, it's valuable to periodically clear the strands between you and your partner to keep everything harmonic. It's also possible for someone to attach a sexually generated cord onto you because of their desire. An energy attachment can even arrive from a stranger in public with a seemingly casual but intense yearning focused on you. This is not a good use of their energy and it can disrupt yours. Strands of energy also exist between animals and pets, from ideas and past lives. I could talk about all of these and go into different examples. I've known where these cords are connected to ghosts and spirits. I have seen strands formed between pieces of art and music. And one of the most fascinating is with the collective unconscious. I mean, every time you pray, a strand unfurls and connects you to the collective unconscious of the prayer or chant. Everyone who has said a specific prayer or chanted a particular mantra increases the vibrancy and life force of the collective energy. And the more people who chant a mantra or say a prayer, the stronger the life force of that prayer becomes, and the prayer becomes its own energetic cord. If you want to go deep down the rabbit hole of all the different ways that you're connected through energy strands, once again, check out Denise Lynn, and she discusses everything from pet strands to wild animal strands to totem animals to ideas and gives examples of each of these attachments that occur. It is one of the things that happens. So the question is, how do we cut the ties to these? Is there a way to cleanse these strands? How do we go about doing that? There are a number of methods that you can use cord clearing methods that are very powerful and effective. The first clearing method is cutting strands with knives, physical and non-physical. Whether you do this method in a physical or non-physical way, it, it needs to be done with compassion and a powerful intent. If you're upset or angry while you do it, you might be able to cut the cord, 
but your anger will cleave the person's energy towards you and the cord will reattach. I know this isn't easy. Obviously, if you're cutting a cord, it's because it is causing imbalances in your life or it's because you're distressed by someone. However, the more you can detach and become the sacred observer with the understanding that there was a reason for attachment and on some level you gained value from it, the easier it will be to dismantle it. So, first of all, number one, non-physical cord cutting would involve cleanse yourself, take a shower, scrub with salt, then have a cold rinse. I always like salt because it rids you of evil spirits. This refreshes your auric field. And you can also take a salt water bath with a cold rinse. Wear light colored clean clothes. Light colors reflect and dark colors absorb. You want an unhealthy attachment deflected rather than absorbed. Secondly, drink plenty of water. It's important to be hydrated for this type of ceremony. Energized water is best. To energize water, either hold your hand over it and bless it or leave it out in the sun for at least five hours with the intent of the heavenly forces energizing it. I would say then write it down. Be clear on exactly who and or what you will release. Sometimes it helps to write down exactly what you desire and place it on your personal altar. If you don't have an altar, light a candle and place the list under the candle. Then sit in a comfortable location, close your eyes, and relax. It's worthwhile to have some ambient music, maybe some metaverse in the background. Music can allow you to go deeper, faster. Take a few very deep, full breaths. With each inhalation, imagine that shimmering, fresh energy is filling you, and all that is not needed is being released with every exhalation. For many... The next step would be to call upon your spiritual guides or angels or ancestors to offer support and guidance. Ask with gratitude that they help you release what is not needed for the highest good of all. And then visualize. Once you feel relaxed, imagine that you are atop a high grassy hill. In the far distance, you might see a snow-capped mountain or a luminous seashore. Spend time getting a sense of this lofty vantage point. Imagine that the high grasses are slowly waving in a gentle breeze. See white fluffy clouds overhead. Take a moment to feel strong and grounded. There's a meandering pathway that leads to the top of the hill. Anyone or anything that has attachments to you can come up the pathway to you as you desire. And then cut and release. You notice that in your hands you have large sharp shears, scissors, or a knife. It feels holy as the first person you desire to cut cords with appears on the path. Imagine that they are standing in front of you. Look at the strands that connect you. If they are brightly colored and vibrant, you may consider leaving them. If you see any that look dark and dull or shriveled, take your shears or scissors or knife and cut that cord. If your knife begins to feel dull, hold it above your head to be sharpened by the light of the sun. Sometimes you'll cut a cord and it seems to come back. Just keep cutting again and again, or even pull it out. Eventually, it will stay severed. And then you want to affirm at the end of cutting the cord, you want to say, I, and then your name, hereby release and sever all cords to you that do not serve and support our highest good. Or as I cut the ties to you, I honor my space and I honor your space. We each stand free in our own light. I am free. You are free or only that which is beneficial and empowering remains. And then offer gratitude. Thank the person or object or situation or idea for being in your life. Then send them sincere blessings for their own journey. This is an important part of the process. It completes the cycle and makes it easier for you to go forward in your life without the attachment and without any sort of boomerang effect. There's also physical cord cutting. Physical cord cutting combines visualization with the use of a real knife, shear, or scissors. The steps are similar. However, instead of sitting, stand strong. Hold the tool that you're going to use for the severing. Instead of visualizing the knife or other tool, severing the cords, actually take the knife and cut or slice through the air where you perceive the cord to be. Pay particular attention to the solar plexus area as this area is the one that is most often clogged by attachments. Obviously, you don't want to cut yourself. 
keep your eyes open when cutting. Make sure that the instrument you use is later washed and rinsed in cold water to release any residual energies that can end up on that utensil. Another technique is the black string method. You can use this in a ceremonial way. Obtain a photo of the person from whom you want to cut strands and a photo of yourself. Roll each photo into an individual scroll and wrap a black string, black cord, or black yarn around one. If you don't have photos, simply write your names on pieces of paper and make them into your scrolls. Then leaving at least nine inches of thread or string between the two scrolls, wrap the second scroll with the remaining string in a meditative space. Hold the intent that all is not needed is released. You might say, I invoke the pure light of spirit to flow through me. I am embraced and protected by the love of the creator. Only that which supports and nurtures me is attached to me. I am safe, strong, and well, all is well. Then take your scissors or knife and cut the cord cleanly. I suggest taking the two parts and disposing of them at distance apart, such as burying them or ideally burning them with the intent that all cords are clear and bright and in accordance with the highest good. Some even suggest using a traditional knife for cutting cords. In Tibet, a knife called a uh, Kartika is a decorated crescent-shaped knife that is used to cut or sever material and worldly bonds that do not serve you. The knife is decorated with a varja on type, which is a bulb-like decoration which is thought to help destroy ignorance, which in turn leads to enlightenment. Another kind of knife used in Tibetan Buddhism is the purba, which is a three-sided ceremonial knife that has many uses. However, one of the ways Tibetans use it is to dispel demon thought forms and then administer purification. It's believed that the firba can cut negative ties to entities, people, and thought forms, including those generated by a group. Thought forms are energy manifestations of thoughts, ideas, or emotions of an individual or of a group of people. Some people can sense them, such as when they enter into a space. I do believe we can use this to detach the cord from a pendulum, a group a group thought that you're sucked into, maybe it's through the media or something, you start to form energetic cords to that pendulum and you can cut those energetic cords in the same way. There's other ways that you can cleanse your energy body that go outside of just cutting the cords. That includes grounding, standing barefoot on the earth. You do this. Uh, it's preferable near a tree. Place your weight equally on both legs. Gently rock back and forth side to side until you feel that you have found your center point. Observe with your eyes closed. Imagine that you're scanning your body and then pulling the strands. Once you feel the strand, you can pull it off or as you ground, the cord is removed and quickly reach down and place the end of the cord when you pull it off into the earth. So you find the cord, you imagine yourself ripping it from you, and then you attach it to the earth. And then it gives another place for that energy to go so it doesn't cause any feedback or boomerang. There's other things that people have used, such as spirit pruning and dowsing and dissolving candles, violet flames, golden lights, different affirmations. All of those things can work. Clearing, clearing cords with feathers has been suggested smudging all of these are amazing techniques I would only tell you that you will find something that will work for you those are some basic ideas to at least visualize severing the cord keep an eye out on a future meditation for cutting cords which we will try to create but I think you can do it beyond meditation some of these techniques require more than just sitting and listening to a meditation. And I wanted to discuss how they work and what you can do. And the only other thing I would say is once you've detached these cords from you, especially if they're negative cords, then I would work on protecting and shielding your energy field. Check out my episode on methods of psychic self-defense, which refers to Dion Fortune's discussion of this. You can simply just bring light into your aura by imagining light coming into your aura and that should create a protective shield around you. The more you start to invigorate your shield and awaken your Merkaba, the more protected you'll be. The more you invite the highest levels of light and focus upon 
the God element, the creator in all of its things, the more energy you'll bring to your body that will protect you. And I would certainly consider that a part of whatever you're doing. Once you've cut the cord, then your field may be open at that point. So you want to protect and shield yourself from deliberate psychic attacks, symptoms of psychic attacks, anything like that. And on the other end of the spectrum, you're never going to be completely free of all these strands. And some of these strands can actually really help you. Specifically, the strands of the people that you love and the things that help you every day. And you can go out actively looking to create powerful energy strands to things that you enjoy and love, to people that you love. And you can utilize these strands to create a community, a connection with the people around you. Energy cords are always going to be there. And it's not about getting rid of the energy cords or cutting the cords as much as knowing who you want to attach to and connect to. So if you clear your space and protect your energy fields and are actively with people that are of a loving high vibration, don't be afraid to connect to them. What I believe happens when we join into a social memory complex as we move into the new earth, the social memory complex itself is a variety of different connections where everybody's connected like a cellular organism as one and each sharing its energies becomes something much, much greater than we could ever be individually. And I believe that the cords that we attach are what it's all about. So connect to those people that are worthy of connection and enhance those connections. Connect to the one that you love and keep that connection positive. Watch your emotions and watch the things that you do and you can change your life. Now, there's a whole other discussion of different crystals that you can use that can help clean your energy field and help you attach your connections and all that stuff. That's stuff we could talk about on an entire other episode. But I wanted you to be aware that you are connected all around you to things, people, places, and ideas. And if you spend some time trying to analyze these connections, it may radically change your life, giving you more energy, may help you become aware of why you become depressed in the middle of the day. I honestly believe you can be passing somebody on the street and you can create a connection with them. And then later that person might get depressed and then you feel depressed because you have created that connection with them. So just the awareness of it is the most important first step that you can take. And once you're aware of these energy strands, you start to see them, you start to feel them, you start to become aware of them, and you can use them to change your life and the world. So please let me know if you're aware of this phenomenon, and if you cut energy strands and cords, if you enhance them, what things do you do when you're aware of an energetic connection between someone? Do you cut the cords? Do you bind the cords? What do you do? If you have techniques that you use, I would love to hear about them. Please share them in the comments. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.